Hello there, Pete Brooker here from Tailors With Love and this is the sequel that no one asked for. <laughs> right, no one said, hey, can you do another blog on fashion books, please? Because it's super interesting. So let's crack on. First up, House of Nutter, The Rebel of Savile Row. So I'm doing a college assignment on Tommy Nutter as we speak. And believe me, this guy, Tommy Nutter, had a very interesting life. He was this flamboyant rock and roller. Tom Ford often cites him as someone that inspired his style. And you can certainly see that in the wide lapels. It not only talks about Tommy Nutter, but what Savile Row was like at that time during the 60s, 70s, early 80s. Uh, the political climate, there's some nice stories of Yoko Ono and John Lennon in there. Famously, Tommy Nutter, together with his cutter Edward Sexton, did all the suits for the Beatles for their album cover, Abbey Road. With the exception of Georgie Boy, who rocked up in denim that day. No idea why. Hey, and in fact, there's one for you fashion historians. Why did Georgie Boy not wear Nutter to the shoot? <laughs> Fuck no, he's going to know that. Um, he also did shit tons of suits for Elton John. And there's a nice story in there about how Tommy made about 50 regatta jackets for Elton's tour of America. And, and then Elton decides to wear a Donald Duck costume. Oh, the 80s. Oh, the drugs. So second up, fashion and film. A beautiful book written by a regular guest on the podcast, Christopher Lafferty, author of this and the blog Close on Film. So... You can get the skinny on what Tom Ford was up to during Quantum of Solace, Skyfall and Spectre. Chris thinks that Quantum is Tom Ford's best styled movie of the Bond franchise. I happen to be in agreement with him. We are simpatico. You also have Versace in here. They they made the dress for Eva Green. Oh, and there's a Sophie Harley Love Knot. They did the dress for Halle Berry and Die Another Day. So Versace has done quite a bit of other stuff. But one of my favourite chapters is the one on Nino Ceruti, and Chris does really well here to distinguish the look of Nino Ceruti's suits as one of uh, authority as opposed to the relaxed and unstructured designs that, say, Dickie would wear in American Gigolo, which I still haven't seen, by the way. Fuck, that's insane. <laughs> Shouldn't even admit to it. Oh, more Bondy stuff. There's Pierce dancing with Rene Russo in the remake of The Thomas Crown Affair. That's a Holston dress, and boy, is it fantastic. Pierce clearly enjoying himself. And I, although I didn't think he was allowed to be seen in a tux between Bond films. Or well, maybe not allowed to be photographed in a tux, something like that. He was he had to have this tux embargo, so he wasn't allowed to see promoting other movies whilst he was Bond, dressed looking like James Bond. That's why you have posters for the Grey Owl that look like this. <laughs> you have a look at movie posters and go, I have no idea what this fucking film's about. And there's uh, Amy Adams in another Holston dress. Fucking hell. Monica Bellucci, Dolce Gabbana, Buenos Fatunas, Chica, or whatever Bond says to her. I digress. Number three, Boutique London by Richard Lester, A History of King's Road to Carnaby Street. Love me this book, filled with some awesome photos, and it really paints a picture of the fashion revolution that happened in London in the 60s. So it starts with Vince Manshop, of course, founded by Bill Green. Uh, look, look who he had modelling clothes for him back in the day, eh? And it talks about Mr. Fish, famous floor walker at Turnbull and Nasser, of course, featured in this photo. There's Blades, named after the fictional members club from Moonraker. Now a restaurant at Hush Mayfair, owned by Jeffrey Moore. Of course, all these lovely Bond tie-ins to this book. And uh, look at this photo. It's probably my favourite. A gentleman in the street wearing a military jacket, which, of course, was an upcoming trend during the 60s, challenged by another gentleman on the street, presumably about the ethics of wearing such a jacket for fashion. You know, these jackets, of course, would have been clothing many of the soldiers who lived and died during the Second World War. And then the Apple Store, which was opened by the Beatles management. That only lasted a year, and then they painted over this mural because they deemed it to be an act of vandalism. So, really interesting book. Number four, Making the Cut by Richard Anderson. Now, the PR people at Richard Anderson sent me this book. Very nice of them. And it goes into some really nice details about the safari jacket. You'll get to learn about Richard's history on the row. There's Roger here. Some nice cut on the pockets there. That is a military-style outbreast bellow pocket. And the narrow jacket, it gives you these patterns of history. And, of course, there's... Robert Wiseman there showing you how classy and menacing it can look. Number five, Christian Dior. Okay, so these last two books have no pictures or connections to the Bond movies unless you're counting Craig turning up to an event with this Dior Natch suit, which no one really liked apart from me. Um, I don't even think Daniel liked it. I haven't seen him in it since. So this book will give you many great ideas for designs. There's also some pencil sketches of the designs. These sketches have actually encouraged me. I've I've, I've always felt like I've, I'm rather shit at drawing. Well, I know I'm rather shit at drawing. But you don't have to be an amazing 
drawer to design, I don't think. You can just sketch out an idea like Dior did here. And I think these sketches are fantastic, but I'm just saying this is no Da Vinci. I found that you develop your own style when you draw and you just really just want to transport what's in your head on the page and give other people an outline of what you're thinking. So my style is tracing things, then bunging it through filters like Illustrator. You know, it's a brave new world. So last one, anyway, I'm, I'm definitely ramming on this one. Last one, and this one has been a fantastic resource for me, the Alexander McQueen book. Again, if you're really screwed for design ideas, then check this book out. You think that there is nothing more that you can do with the design of a suit? Think again, look how McQueen has interpreted the silhouette here of a suit by expanding upon the drape. This is also, um, there's also some lovely quotes in here. I mean, he was a genius, no doubt about it, and his shows were legendary. He didn't make cutesy dresses. In fact, there is a nice quote in here about not wanting women to look naive, that they have to have some sinister aspect to them. I think he would have designed some amazing dresses for Bond women. His style was so threatening. Anyway, so that completes a list. I actually hope this helps you guys, especially if you're thinking of studying or doing a fashion design course like the one I'm on. Again, if you like this video, dig in the free content, man. Click on through the link below anytime you want to buy anything on Amazon. Support the show. Keep the lights on. And until next time, buenas fatunas.